My uh, name is Patrick Zimmer from Table Mountain Vineyards and Winery near Huntley, Wyoming. And uh, our part of our operation is a vineyard and winery, obviously, but we also are a diversified uh, farm and ranch as well. We kind of run two different enterprises on the same land, uh, but our entire acreage consists of a farm and ranch as well as vineyards of cattle, beef cattle, corn, alfalfa and grass hay, wheat and silage corn as well. We're a pretty diversified operation, so um, throughout the different years we've done anything from custom ca cattle feeding, um, le running other cattle on our pastures, dry edible beans, it just depends on kind of our crop rotation and, and where we're at in our enterprise. So we host weddings, private events, um, meals, um, we've done everything from birthday parties to anniversaries to um, even a memorial service. So we're very diversified in that aspect and it helps us um, generate interest in the winery, obviously create demand in our products as well as just kind of be a community center for the locals to gather because unfortunately as towns get smaller and smaller there's less places that you can do things so that's where we're at with that. Well the, the vineyard uh, and winery aspect of our operation is probably um, I think we run on just a little over 10 acres compared to the over 1,000 acres that we manage and, and have in commercial agriculture production. But within that 10 acres is probably 90% of our labor force, it seems. Uh, vineyard, growing vineyards in Wyoming or anywhere across the U.S. is a very labor intensive. Um, a lot of work goes into it, a lot of hand pruning. There's not a lot of mechanical equipment that you can purchase in. And so, um, there's a lot of hand pruning, hand picking, pretty much everything we do. We have about 10,000 vines. Every time we do something to one vine, we have to do 10,000 times. So very labor intensive. And then our focus is to make solely and purely 100% Wyoming grown wines and products. So we make grape wine, honey wine, raspberry wine, but everything we do is 100% Wyoming grown. In terms of where we planted grapes, it kind of goes along with how we built the winery. We planted in areas we couldn't productively farm. Um, we have vineyards in um, the corners of pivots. When the pivots swing, there's always that, that triangle that you can't really irrigate efficiently and get to. Um, at least we couldn't because of the way our irrigation systems work. So a lot of our grapes are in kind of minimalized places that were just basically um, either weed patches or corners that we couldn't um, irrigate. Most of the factors, at least for the crop Land. I guess our factor is just obviously diverse, diversification, um, crop rotation, yields, um, especially for varieties of corn, which, which grow in a very short season. Um, we're making leaps and uh, bounds with new varieties of corn. And so every year we're trying to, I guess, focus on the new better variety or varieties that are more suited to our um, soil conditions. And so I would say probably crop yield, um, the feasibility of it, how much inputs we're putting to get X amount of outputs out. I mean, we do have areas across our farm that we have found that just weren't meant for, for growing crops and they have a little higher pH or a little less drainage. And so we've just really changed our thinking, I guess, over the years and so much of pushing to get every single acre into cropland, but really focusing on the acres that work well. So non-crop prop habitats on our property would include, um, I guess, grassland, just areas that we've turned into grass either for pasture or um, it's not a true crop. We've actually taken some cropland and um, turned it back into wetland. And a lot of those places were places, again, that we found that we couldn't farm productively or we were putting more inputs than we were getting out of it. So um, we have turned a lot of wetlands areas over um, just to kind of in that natural habitat. We have uh, three duck ponds here nearby the winery, and then we have one large uh, pond uh, on our farm as well where we've basically turned that back into kind of what it used to be. I think the non-crop land um, is very important to part of our operation because um, there are areas that just need to kind of stay in that natural habitat. Um, we will turn some of those non-crop lands maybe eventually into crop land, depends on the year and the moisture, but just as part of um, I guess keeping the, the soils, um, keeping the nutrients, um, and kind of being able to rotate and transfer through that. And the non-crop land areas also are great, uh, I guess, habitat for wildlife. 
wild turkey we have been able to get on the property. A few years ago we had one and now I think we have about 30. So all of those areas have helped kind of expand that um, wildlife aspect of it. The deer are doing very well here, which were, um, unfortunately they like to attack our, our corn and our, our grapes, but uh, we do get a lot of different um, wildlife here. And since we've expanded the wetlands, we also get a pretty stable and pretty um, hardy amount of sandhills cranes that come through at the end of March and April. And so um, it's kind of a fun thing to kind of watch them as they migrate through, but we'll get thousands of them at any given time just kind of hanging out in the cornfield and, and near the waterways. The public perception of the habitats, whenever you try and enhance a landscape, I think that's, that's a win both for a producer and for public perception. Um, one of our, I guess, desires when we built a few of our wetlands um, over here by the, the winery and kind of the event center was to take an area that was probably not as, site, as sightly as it could be and to at least enhance that a little bit. It just kind of helps with the overall perception, not only from the agricultural uh, perspective, but where we are in kind of an agro-tourism industry through the winery, it also helps tell that story a little bit and get people to realize that agriculture is a lot more about um, you know, just farming as much as you can, but also being a steward to the land. I, I would say probably in the next few years, we will obviously look at um, more water saving features, um, probably adding some different irrigation systems, um, pivots. We're actually looking at subsurface irrigation, um, some just kind of new techniques, especially in areas that um, are prone to being waterlogged or don't drain as well. Um, and again, just kind of focusing on, on the area that we have and, and just trying to improve the area as a whole as well as, I guess, continue in the agricultural industry like we have for generations.